Welcome to Three Devs and a Maybe, the podcast series for beginner web developers and general web enthusiasts. Now, introducing your show hosts, Michael Budd, Fraser Hart, Lewis Keynes, and Ed Mann. Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Free Devs and the Maybe. I am joined this week by with the usual colleagues, apart from the uh, Fraser Hart, who is on his um, massive uh, Pacific row, but uh, we have the usual Ed Man. Hello. Lewis Keynes. Good evening. And we have a very special guest tonight. Uh, I am pleased to introduce Phil Sturgeon. How are you doing, Phil? I'm, I'm good. <laughs> ah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm good, thanks. Uh, yeah, thanks for coming on the show, but I really appreciate it. So we, we're going to... Uh, bombard you with some questions later but uh yeah thanks again for coming on so uh yeah how's everyone Sweet. been uh Sorry, thanks for having me oh it's absolutely our pleasure our pleasure ed man good week yeah not bad man yeah oh, yeah. i just ask uh, fraser does anyone actually know if he started the row yet or is he no still... he hasn't oh, he, no. Hasn't. he might not actually get going on it till the 19th he said yesterday because i thought it i thought they'd already started yeah lazy God, it's yeah it's the gears. next week doing, i think son? isn't it and they have to wait for like a weather window <sighs> I think that's so, just but... lies, cheating. But yeah, they were on the uh, Meridian News this morning. Merid- the news, the, <laughs> yeah, the yeah. local news. Oh. Local news doesn't get nice. any bigger than that. Does it? So. <laughs> yeah, no, nothing bigger than the Meridian News. <laughs> what about you, Lee? Good week. Yeah, not too bad. I uh, got to work this morning at seven o'clock, and I'm still here. <laughs> oh man, and I'm, I'm tired, but no, it's been it's been good. The days are flying by, which is a good thing. Um, yeah. Still, I'm plenty busy, and um, a couple of my old projects is kicking off again now, which is nice. So, yeah, the next few weeks are going to be busy. Uh, but, yeah, all good, all good, all good. Awesome. Well, uh, I, I, I think Hot Picks has been kicked out by... It uh, wasn't much, uh, much love for Hot Picks. There's no back hotness in the picks. Hot Picks just sounds like you get something off, like, I don't know, one of those TV shows. No, is it TV channels that sell stuff? <laughs> you know? Yeah, I guess so, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I did have something that I was going to show you guys, though. But um, <laughs> I'm worried. Actually, before I show you, that, yeah, like... seeing as off air, you did say you were naked, so <laughs> I really don't want to see this. Yeah, but that's normal. Ed. Yeah, that's true. There's nothing new there. Your loss. Your loss. <laughs> uh, but while I get this, because I'll, I'll put my microphone on mute so you don't hear me smashing my keyboard. But uh, I yeah, I want your undress. You free? What, what would you prefer to be called? Web developer, or developer, or programmer, or what would you like to be Code known as? Code monkey. Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. I, I usually go with Jason Farmer. <laughs> <laughs> That's I didn't all I do that. every day. Jason in, Jason out. Uh, I just say I make websites. That's crud. pretty much it. Just call me crud, pretty much. The crud man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> database a- optimization a- guru. Ed API man. guru rock star, obviously. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about I you, say, we, Well, we all have new business cards come out uh, this week. Uh, mine uh, came. Oh, what's yours? Web uh, no, just developer, which I was happy about actually, because I don't. I don't think web developer kind of. I don't know. It kind of pinch you into a corner. Thug. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, it shows that's all I'm good for. But I don't know. Prefer <laughs> to be developer or programmer, to be honest with you, because I'm not I'm software architect. No, that's nice. I like what that. Is, yeah. What does it say? <laughs> on your, what does it say on your contract? What are you? Uh, that's a good point, actually. You think just developer? No, I'm, sure. I'm, I'm apparently I'm an I'm a new media developer. It says on my on my job. <laughs> I read but anyway, some, I, I read something somewhere where sorry, basically oh. said. Um, sorry, I think I think I'm on a bit of lag here, but uh, or it's the wine. Mm. I have no idea. Um, I read something that basically said uh, a programmer is someone that's that can do one language. So, like, imagine you know you're just punching in uh, like the old punch cards. Like you you know you do that one thing. Yeah, you're, you're writing lag. a program. Um, and then if you're a developer, then uh, you can do multiple languages. And if you're an engineer, then you kind of you have the development aspects covered as well as sysadmin stuff and, and more, yeah. more skills. This yeah. makes me realize we need a new word for me then. <laughs> <laughs> but if you, uh, if you guys look at that link that I sent you, because like, I basically, I didn't moan about it, but I just kind of brought up the topic of work. But someone sent me this and I thought it was quite See, good. But with, with, your, with your avatar, I'm assuming you want to be called King Developer then. Is that... <laughs> you're aiming at or you know what you know when you have like a really really big problem and your confidence just drops through the floor and you're like i'm such an idiot i should be able to fix this and then you have that breakthrough moment where you actually fix it and then you have that absolute ecstasy for like 10 minutes where you think you're god 
that, that was basically <laughs> the result of that. I, I can't remember what called, she was now. I want to be called Head ele- of Elephants. Head I, of I, Elephants. I liked MILF Commander. I thought that was good. <laughs> <laughs> no Milf. idea what that is. Oh. Uh, sounded amazing. Or Cool Kid. Science Viking. Oh, wow, this is insane. Yeah. Suspi- suspicious Fisherman. <laughs> That yeah. suits you. That definitely suits you. Yeah. Head receiver. That. Okay. Oh, dear. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> definitely that could... not that. And it, I love that. Our oh, Tim Berners-Lee, web developer. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, I know. I was surprised by that developer one. Developer of the web? No, web developer. Yeah. You would have a better title for, for him, surely. <laughs> no, you'd have CEO of science. <laughs> Uh, but I did have a couple of other things just very quickly because um, we want to obviously spend most of our time uh, talking to Phil really. But um, uh, just one thing I found was a, a tutorial on the changelog.com, which was just for installing Homebrew. So I'll put that in show notes. And the other thing, I briefly mentioned this to Ed before. And i got to be honest, I've been out at the front end game for way, way, such a long time. But basically, a couple of guys in my work, front end developers, they were saying that basically the idea now that is that floating for like um your layout of your page is bad it's bad practice they're not going back to but, tables are they <laughs> no i don't think so but i i don't say has anyone else heard that I, no. am i just way behind the times i or? only heard that when you told me today and i was shocked <sighs> phil you heard anything about that i couldn't care less about css Boom. <laughs> i like it <laughs> that was yeah. kind of my my feeling as well to be honest with you but. you and your css yeah, but I did find a Stack Overflow thing on it, so I'll put that in the show notes as well. Out, out of interest, what are they what are they saying to do instead? I think the idea was just using a uh, position. Uh, so everything's like absolute. position relative. <laughs> well, no, Ed loves that. Yeah, Ed loves position, position. absolutely everything. Yeah, it works on Fra- my screen. I don't. Can you just use you. frame sets? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We need to get a, we need to get a proper front end developer on here to discuss this topic. We'll do it another time, I reckon. But. Uh, yeah, that was the first I heard of it. It sounded quite controversial to me. And the guy who said it is Welsh as well, so I take it when he says with a pinch of salt, but uh, it was a bit weird. Uh, His accent but, or... No, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think we should move on to our, our special guest, if you guys agree. Go for sure. it. Yeah. I'm not so, entirely uh, sure I like being called special. I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> but you're, quote, a, you're, special. you're a big player in the, in the web game. You're, special player. You're a celebrity in the web game. <laughs> Oh, well, uh, thanks. That's, that's nice. <laughs> Mickey, are you um, still naked? I just want to know. I am completely naked. Okay. Yeah. Does that make you uncomfortable? Uh, I'm, yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah. <laughs> He's not. I don't think he is. But he could be right. sure actually as well. Yeah. Um, I think yeah. when, you're meant to, when you're talking in front of people, you're meant to imagine that your audience are naked, not just that's be right. naked yourself in front of your computer. <laughs> that's that's, that's, that's why I'm not, not scared yeah. at all. <laughs> I got that completely wrong. Wow. <laughs> How many times do you have to get arrested before it goes in, Mike? <laughs> uh, I was going to go somewhere with that, but I won't. Um, yeah. So I guess, Phil, did you want to uh, did you want to introduce yourself? Give us a little bit about your your background and history. Yes, um, I suppose uh, I'm, I'm a PHP developer primarily, who's done a bunch of other languages. Um, most well known for my involvement with stuff in PHP. Um, uh, I've done a lot of being involved with uh, the coding editor framework and and uh, Pyro CMS as a CMS I built and a few other projects and more recently I've been involved with uh, the framework interoperability group. You can tell I've not had too much of this wine because I can actually say interoperability <laughs> um, and and loads of other projects. I try and kind of help out with education and kind of get in things like PHP the right way uh, dot com done and. And lots of other things like that. So people kind of seem to know me these days for my my involvement with those projects. Yeah, that's very cool. I think uh, I first sort of came across your name when I was first getting into the whole uh, coding nicer scene, uh, which we've we've covered to death in our podcast, to be honest with you. But um, yeah, that's pretty cool to be involved with that. I guess even though you know, see, you're you're not working on that anymore, but it's still quite a cool thing to have on your CV, I guess. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Never, never uh, got a penny out of it, but it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Ed, Lou, I think you had quite a few uh, sort of questions, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, so, firstly, how much did you remember of last week's uh, episode? Well, I remember the entire thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't at all. Oh dear. Again, I was saying, 
normally it's me that ends up accidentally battered on one of my podcasts. Oh, episode twenty, <laughs> episode twenty four of PHP Town Hall. You can just see me swearing. Uh, like you can see my eyes were half shut. Like you, if you imagine the cartoon characters that's drunk, they hiccup and a bubble comes out. Like you could see the bubble coming out on that podcast. So oh, it's so okay that for once that. it was somebody else. <laughs> Ed was going to share it with us, but he's since deleted it, so we've never had the privilege of listening to it, which is a shame. Have you 36 pass wiped your hard drive that it was on? <laughs> I was like, secure arrays. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, yeah, I suppose my first question, actually, is probably a very generic, but like, how did you get involved in programming and what, yes. what got you into it, you know, from a young age? Um, it's funny, I've heard this story before, but for the benefits of the recording, um, I got into web development originally through Spite. Um, there was somebody, well, there was an online um, web magazine, uh, at my school, so I was about 11, 12 years old, and it was like this online magazine, they called it, and it was just an area where one of the IT teachers would FTP sync some shit now and then. Um, and there was, a, there was a game review website, and it was awful, and it was run by a guy that I just hated, and I wanted to just do better than him. Um, so I basically uh, learned how Publisher worked, and did it on Publisher, because he did it on PowerPoint or something ridiculous. <laughs> I first learned how Microsoft Publisher worked, and then I, I redid it afterwards in um, Front Page, uh, yes. back in the day, Front Page 97 or some stupid thing. Um, <laughs> and I then redid it in Dreamweaver 3, and I remember being really excited when Dreamweaver 4 came out, and all that sort of thing. But it was all static HTML, and it took forever to get anything done. It was a, a really big games website. It had like two or 3,000 pages full of cheats and reviews and all this stuff. And I was just copying and pasting all the header and footer stuff manually every single time. Um, and then somebody was like, oh, you could use this thing called PHP and do and page equals cheats. Yeah. And then I was like, whoa, I can have one header and footer filed and re-include it. That's amazing. <laughs> um, and that kind of changed my world. And I started off, yeah, just programming from there, basically. It's amazing like, how many people have got that same sort of background story. Because I, I mean, I think I made my first web page in like Microsoft Word and then kind of reverse engineered... Like looking at the HTML, obviously, yeah. like you know, stripping out all the you know span tags and all that kind of stuff. But and I think I don't know, was it was it you, Lou, or I, maybe Fraser had similar kind of uh, first yeah, introduction I, to it. I, I think. I, yeah, well, on, uh, I had a blog on Blogspot, I think it was, or Blogger. Uh, yeah, I just messed around with the HTML on there and just literally took bits out and tried to add bits in and just just to see what it did. That's that was my first foray into it all. How yeah. many people do you think these days are going to say I got into web development through MySpace? Me? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got into CSS through MySpace. Oh, oh, man. I know. That was really bad. It's like, yeah, let's just, it's like cut it all out, wasn't it? It was like overlay the stuff, do all the hacks to do that. You'd have to have the ad to make sure they wouldn't remove it all. And then you could do what you wanted. <laughs> I, I love that one of the main features for MySpace was just because they didn't sanitize their input. Yes. <laughs> It was a good feature. Yeah, so, uh, well, I, I got into it through Front Page as well, uh, a jokes website, as you do. Um, just co- literally copying from other websites and being like, yeah, this is my jokes website now. Come to mine on, like, free webs and just uploaded it for FTP, uh, <laughs> like a boss. Uh, as I say, exactly the same as you, like, all static and everything. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so so what so how, what got you... So PHP then, got, you got into PHP through that, and then... F- how long after that was that encoding night came into it and stuff? Was that quite quickly or I suppose actually probably not time-wise? No, I mean, I was programming for probably a couple of years before I discovered Coding Nighter. Um, and everything I did before using Coding Nighter was an absolute abomination. Um, it was shocking. I was involved with, um, well, I was, I was a user of PHP DB, which back at the time was just <laughs> trying to shake loose its PHP 4. Actually, no, it, was, it still was PHP 4. Um, so it was a bit of a bit of a mess when I started using it, um, and I was also using Post Nuke, which uh, I don't know if you guys know, but it's a really really fucking old CMS. Yep. <laughs> um, and I, I was kind of using both of those, and my first foray into the <laughs> my first foray into the um, into the open source world was I was involved with a project that was basically crowbarring together PHP BB and Post Nuke, and it was called PNPHBB, and I. I'm, made a website called pnphbbhacks.org or something stupid and made loads of different add-ons for them. Um, but yeah, it, it, was all, it was all really, really bad. Um, I got involved in Code Nighter in 2007, 2008, somewhere, just started using it. Um, and then I, I was learning about controllers and models and, all, and views and all the stuff that we all take for granted now. I was like, this changed. This is amazing, and started using it all, and my code got slightly better, and I thought it was great. And looking back now, it was a shit show. Even then, 
Oh, we all, you still, I'm sure, I don't know, I, I feel every time I write something, a couple of months later, I look back at it and be going, why did I write it like this? Yeah. I, I, well, I I'm yeah. popular for saying this, but I still got some. I do it for the last month as well. <laughs> I've still got some love for uh, for Code Igniter. I think, you know, for I've got old sites that are written in Code Igniter, and I still think, it, you know, if you ever need to tack anything on, it's really easy to do. I have to say that in its defense. I know, you know, uh, there's a lot of criticisms, but in terms of getting stuff done quick, which perhaps isn't the best thing to do, but I do think it has its place for that. I really do. It's but obviously... Same. Oh, sorry, Mike, you guys. No, no, go for it, mate. No, I was going to say exactly the same. You know, it was uh, it was my first MVC framework, and yeah. a lot of the stuff I worked on was uh, was you know stuff that had been working on with you and Ed as well, when our, where we worked before. Yeah. And uh, I think I think that's why, even though I've kind of moved away from it now, I, I still have have an affection for it. And I was I'm just, just kind of sorry to see that it's disappearing. And I don't know, Phil, do you have any kind of inside information on the future of it, or is it a done deal now, or or what? Do you know anything about it? Um, yeah. Some information surfaced in the last couple of days that maybe look a little bit more hopeful than I have been in the past. And basically, Code Igniter was in a really weird point where basically between version 1.71 1. 1. and 1.72, there was like 18 months with, with no work being done on Code Igniter at all. There was just this massive year and a half gap with sweet F happening. Um, and the only change that came out was like a slight bug fix to make it work slightly better on PHP 5.3, which is ridiculous. Um, then later on, there was uh, like you know there was just like two or three years of nothing happening. Um, so people got to this point of just like, well, I'm kind of bored of really happening. And then we got added to the court. Like there, there was the volunteer team, the reactor team, myself, and and five other developers. And we all started merging pull requests and listening to community feedback and working on it and doing all the shit that people actually wanted. And that saw a real spurt. But it was too little, too late. Effectively, um, helped release version two, which had a lot of new features. Uh, but it wasn't really enough to make it even vaguely um, vaguely competitive with, with other modern options around. Like, this is when PHP 5.3 has just come out and it's offering all the new funky syntax. PHP, you know, Code Igniter is still basically PHP, uh, PHP 4 code. It's still just old and, and no amount of kind of just little tweaks could change it. So version 3 is kind of around and it's it was ready two years ago. It's still ready now. Um, it's just waiting on Edis Lab to support it. But as we've seen from various blog posts and various different bits of attitude over the years, Edis Lab couldn't give less of a shit if, if they tried. Um, so we're kind of waiting for version 3 to happen, and it's not happening. Uh, I did see a few days ago, though, that luckily it might, it might now be on the cards. Um, the, the, the team have kind of finished devving it, uh, or finished up some things, and... Uh, Derek Jones from Ellis Lab made some comment that looked although they would be willing to put some time into help version three happen, um, but it's just been a lack of um, and and they're also very a very legal company, so I might get shouted at for saying any of this. I have no idea. Um, <laughs> things like no third party, so you can provide any sort of branding, visual design stuff. Somebody designed the version three docs, uh, the user guide, and made it look not awful. Because um, currently it's like a default theme and it looks awful. But somebody somebody provided a pull request and I merged it, and they were like, "No, no, no, we can't accept third party pull requests for designing and branding. We own the branding. We have to be in control." I was like, "Cool, then you should design it and actually finish that job." Um, and they never did, and they they've just reverted the, the the change out. And the reason that the version three branch has been completely useless and unreleased for the last two years is because the documentation hasn't been designed. What, what sort of ridiculous wow. situation is that for a for a project to be in? Um, so it's just kind of been it's been completely chokeholded by by Ellis Lab, um, and hopefully they'll resolve that by finding a new owner. So did you? Uh, oh, sorry, go for no, it. No, I was just, all, all literally going to say. So you, you you wouldn't say at this point in time that it's a definitely dead framework then? Um, it's kind of got as much life in it as Smarty has. I mean, Smarty's still there. I used it when I was twelve, and I can still use it now. It hasn't <laughs> changed. Yeah. You know, it's it's not going to go anywhere. It's just going to sit around and be the same, which is okay. Yeah, go for it, Mike. What were you going to say? Oh, cool. I was just going to say, so, I mean, was it a natural progression then when you, when that kind of happened and you realised it, it wasn't really evolving in the way you wanted? Uh, is that when you got into sort of making fuel? Was that your project or you were just on board with fuel? Or uh, I jumped on as the second person. Um, Dan Horrigan was the, the lead developer for that, and that was exactly right. Um, yeah. Dan Horrigan was involved with Mojo Motor, another Ellis Lab product, and he worked for them as a support guy and then when he, he left the team in a, a bit of a huff, he gets like that, 
Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> and he started working on fuel. And that was, that was when 172 was out and like nothing had happened in about two years. And that was yeah. very much when I was saying like, please, 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 Ellis Lab, please put it on GitHub. Let us help you. Please, we all use this. We really want to make it better. And they were just ignoring us and ignoring us. Um, that was when I got involved with fuel. Um, and then uh, shortly after we got version uh, one of fuel out, uh, Ellis Lab said, oh, okay, we'll do all of the things that Phil said now and make it look like our <laughs> own idea. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I, I then ended up with both of the products and I was like, crap, now I'm maintaining two frameworks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, ha- sorry, go. No, no, you go, you go. How, how do you find like juggling that then, your kind of your daytime job and then maintaining these products, I guess? Um, I think I was in a fairly unique position where it wasn't completely crippling. Um, I made... Like my entire freelance career was like I was the coding night guy. If you needed a freelancer, if you needed someone to come freelance out of your office, like I'd fly to you and spend two weeks working on whatever the hell coding night app you had. Like uh, yeah. I managed to integrate working on the teams and, and the reputation that came with that very much with my career. Um, and and just I would turn up and do work for you. So that made it more doable. Um, companies would say we need this feature in coding nighter, and then they'd pay me to add it in. Um, right. For a while, it was great, and then towards the end, like especially when I took on another full time job, it was just I was spending two or three hours a day handling issues and pull requests and trying to actually get shit done at the day job and just having a heart attack about it. <laughs> well, we were talking about like uh, programmer burnout the other week. I mean, is that something you've had before, or you know, felt close to that? I guess several times. Um, yeah. Again, recently. You know, trying to juggle too many balls just makes you mad. Um, and I've started like, I've got a bit of a reputation of being angry, and usually I'm angry for a reason. But um, recently, yeah. like over the last few months, there's been a few things like innocuous shit that I shouldn't care about, and I'm just like, I will kill you. Um, <laughs> I just freak out, and I can just too many projects, man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you guys, you yeah. shoot. The so questions. I suppose, like uh, as well as those, it's also Pyro CMS that you uh, also maintain and are still currently maintaining. Um, I know you're, you're porting it from Code Igniter to Laravel. Uh, I was wondering how that's going. Yeah, um, it's been going pretty well, and it's been taking a really long time. <laughs> um, switching code from from one framework to the other is awful. That's why I'm involved with the Framework Interoperability Group to try and make <laughs> that sort of stuff less awful. Make it um, easier for other people. I like that. Yeah, and I would never recommend that you guys have said you've got Code Igniter apps. Awesome. Leave them as Code Igniter apps. There's no reason for anyone to randomly port an application just because a new framework's cooler. Apart from me, I'm currently porting because an application's cooler. Um, <laughs> do what I say, not what I do. Yeah, it's, it's nuts. Uh, the idea was that we were going to go with like a, um, a softly, softly approach to upgrading. Um, I mean, the biggest, hardest part of any, any, any open source project is change management. And you can either change so very little that like everyone gets pissed off and wanders off like Code Igniter did, or you can change so very much that you really anger everybody and you ha- everyone has to recode everything. And that's what Drupal have done and Kohana have done and what Laravel yep. used to do. So you have to try and find that middle guide, uh, middle ground, where with Pyro we're saying, okay, version 2.2 is going to be Code Igniter, 2.3 is going to be using some Laravel components and the eloquent data layer and it's all going to be PSR zero awesomeness. And then version 3 is going to use entirely Laravel. So we're kind of stepping bits at a time. Um, it's really hard. It takes a long time. And is there I, anything that pro- oh, I was going to go? Just a quick one. Was there what prompted you guys to to make Pyro CMS? Then what was uh, was there an aim behind it in the first place? Or the aim was to not ever have to use WordPress. That's what I was hoping <laughs> you were going to say. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. When I first started working uh, out of university, I started off uh, sorry, college. Out of college, I started a company. Um, uh, which was basically just me and my friends doing dev work. Uh, and we were rep- making loads of the same websites over and over again. Uh, can you make this basic website which has you know, a blog, um, a few pages, a contact form, and a hotel booking module? Can you make this site that does a blog, a few pages, and this other thing? And it, we realized that we had so much code over and over again that was similar that we, uh, that I, I keep saying we, it was me that did this in the first place. I just munged it together to make a really basic CMS. Um, and then when that company eventually just completely went down the shitter in the recession, um, I just kind of dumped the, the code out on the Code Igniter forums and said, see, you know, have a look, see what you want to do with this. And people kind of liked it, gave me some really good feedback, and then I made a better version. Do you, do you agree? No, I'm 
a bit less down the experience line than Ed, for example. But my experience with WordPress is that it's the, the code is pretty horrible to work with. Do you, do you share that as well? Do you agree or where are your Abs- thoughts? Absolutely. I mean, what yeah. we've done with the product is amazing. Um, yeah. but, but I don't know how they've done it on a code base like that. I mean, <laughs> I guess develop- <laughs> developers that is don't care. a backhand compliment, isn't it? It's so, yeah. so <laughs> nice amazing to, to have done. It's not just, yeah. I think it was kind uh, of around at the right time, wasn't it? it yeah, I think it just met that the market at the right time, and for some reason, it just kind of picked off. I guess, and it does. You know, I agree with you completely. By the way, with the code base, but it kind of does a job that it's meant to do pretty well. Um, it's very easy to set up. You know, they've got their famous kind of what is it? Install in five minutes or whatever. Uh, from that perspective, it you know, like you say, it's a business project. It, it's very good at what it does, I guess. But code base is pretty horrendous certainly really old old school code base isn't it absolutely um i think one of the i've I've explained this before and it's it's very hard for me to not sound bitter but if we can just assume that i'm not being just just go with me um (laughs) it's a really weird situation uh with wordpress they have we can agree that it's not a great code base the quality of the code is not great they they have this product which works um and it's around at the same time as multiple other products all of which work um but the other projects um every Every year or two, they recode themselves. Let's look at the example of Drupal. Pretty much every time they have a new version out, it's a recode. Things, doesn't, things don't work. Seven, eight, nine different, you know, different frameworks, uh, different, different code bases. So with, with WordPress, they've kept it exactly the same and maintained compatibility at the cost of maintaining a shit-awful code base, which hasn't ever improved really over time. Um, and and because, because they haven't changed it or broken stuff, stuff that used to work still works therefore they have a much larger uh, ecosystem of party add-ons and plugins and themes so because they have more add-ons plugins and themes they have more users because people just want the themes they just want to make a blog and have a theme so they have they have more users and then therefore they're a bigger market and more people build for wordpress so therefore they have more content they have you know they have more add-ons and then before they have more users and it's a, a it's like a, a positive feedback loop which i've seen no way of ending whereas a pyro cms it's a smaller thing we haven't got we haven't got the add-ons therefore we haven't got the community therefore we don't have the people making the add-ons and it's a it's just a complete non-starter so they've by by never recoding themselves like drupal has done or other you know, by being slightly larger in the first place, they just have this awesome, awesome feedback loop that will never probably stop. They've really, ta- they've really like directed their uh, thing at the BC, haven't they? Backwards compatibility, and well, they haven't even cared about that because they've never actually changed anything. So it's more, <laughs> it's more just like, yeah, let's just tack on something else. It might just be a great excuse for not doing any work. Yeah, it's like it's for BC, <laughs> you know, we're doing it for that. It's like, yeah, I can't be asked to change this. I love just simple functions and includes and stuff. Yeah, no. Just ride this cash cow until it dies. <laughs> well, they're, they're doing a damn good job of it, aren't they? Oh, dear. Um, I suppose uh, moving on from that then, you, you did briefly talk about the FIG, uh, the Framework Interoperability Group. Um, care to like speak a bit about that? Like what, what's its aims and everything and how is it going at the moment? Yeah. Um, so the, the main aim of the group, the group was started in 2009 by a bunch of people from different frameworks, content management systems, um, different PHP projects of size like Drupal and uh, Zen framework and Symphony, and uh, basically uh, everyone seems to think. Well, a lot of people seem to think that we, we all hate each other, and we're all the different communities. We're all fighting for the most, <laughs> and it's a blood tribal thing. Most of us chat away on Instant Messenger a lot because we're each other's peers, right? If you both run a framework, how many other people out there run a PHP framework? You chat to that person. You want to befriend them, know what problems they're having, see how you could potentially fix something yourself. Um, so I think it was just a more formal approach at that, seeing how we could work together to, to benefit ourselves um, by making standards that we could all comply to. Um, not to make one big mega frame like a lot of people think, but um, to like things with auto-loading. For example, Zend and Symphony and, uh, and Pair were all pretty similar, but they weren't exactly the same. So by making a standard for how auto-loading would work, then they could all start using uh, PSR zero, and it'd be kind of everyone kind of meets in the middle a little bit, and then everyone it all just works together for everyone. And the benefits we saw of that were Composer and all the PHP community, and pretty much every package that has now been released, it's all PSR zero, and that was that was cool. That's a great win, isn't it? Yeah, just like a little accidental thing. Because <laughs> one thing I did remember from last week, uh, I was not in talking about it at the time, uh, was you saying that, you know, if you can help, you know, like with this whole PSR and, and all these things you're doing, like if you can help people 
make software, you know, make a package that then they can release and then someone else can use that package and not have to rewrite that code, but then can build on and add, you know, or maybe submit to that code or maybe make another package that someone else again and this kind of loop goes through. Um, that's kind of what the aim is, isn't it? It's to make it so you things aren't, you know, you haven't got these little kind of... Uh, tribes you've got kind of a community together which can actually all work together instead and... of 20 years um, yeah. um so, louis have you got any other questions uh I've, I've got a few kind of general ones i don't know if you if you had any more on your on the fig thing you were discussing there uh, not or... the fig no no other than the fact that you know you should be using uh you should be using the psr2 standards you know and you should be using psr4 um yeah Ooh, other than we've that. got a new one coming out oh um, can you can you talk about that yeah yeah it's um it's really unfortunate timing actually but we we have um something called psr well the, psr4 is the last one that's been released um there's actually psr5 psr6 and 7 um we have different statuses for them and unfortunately um uh so four is the last accepted there's this draft review and accepted um four is the last accepted Five and six are still in draft, and seven has moved into review. So people are getting a bit confused about how it goes. One, <laughs> two, <laughs> three, four, seven. Um, but whatever, they have numbers, and those numbers don't change. So um, Yeah, seven is about HTTP message. Um, and the basic idea is that uh, when you make a request or a response, that's a message. Um, and that message object can be defined as a standard. Um, the reasoning there is that it's the first step of two steps to make a HTTP client standard. That so that awesome. you can write a package that um, Geocoder is an example I use that has to make loads of requests off to third-party APIs. And that poor guy had to write um, a Zend adapter, a Buzz adapter, a Guzzle adapter, all different HTTP clients, right? <laughs> so the idea is that we write, uh, he, had, he wrote like nine of them. So we write uh-huh. one, uh, one standard message interface, and then uh, you can just interact with all of them in the same way. So that's that review awesome. right now. And because that's similar then to like the idea of what Logger was, you know, to provide this one interface that you can then use and that contract. Yeah, exactly. So instead of you specifically only supporting one or supporting multiple or, and people having five different loggers installed, you just say, give me any logger, whatever you pass me, I'm sure it'll be fine as long as it uses the, the standard interface. That's sweet. How long does, um, I know this is, uh, what's like the average type from review then to accepted May it depends drastically on, based on how much people bike shed and chase their tails. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm sure the coding standards one was one such thing. Uh, the coding standards one was actually quite easy because people were making PSR 1 and then PSR 2 just ended up being the bits they cut off. And they were like, ah, these bits are too controversial. We'll just stick them over there. And then PSR 2 happened. Um, but uh, things like PSR 5, the cache, uh, that is moving into its third year. Um, with no noticeable sign of when it will ever end. Um, So some of them take... I think the quickest we ever had was Logger, and that was like two or three months. It was really quick. Um, And then it could be as fast as a month and a half if everyone agrees and no problems are spotted, but that doesn't happen. Like, a problem came (laughs) up with uh, PSR 7. We agreed to put it to review on the 7th of June. Um, And on the 7th of June, HTTP... uh, Sorry, um... RFC 2616, I believe it is, which is the HTTP specification uh, for how this stuff works, uh, was uh, deprecated. And a brand new HTTP specification has come out. So we were basing it around this like IETF uh, RFC. And then the day we agreed to go to review... They're like, oh, no, we changed everything. Great timing. Ah, oh, you Yay, bastards. <laughs> guys, thank you. I hate you so much. <laughs> uh, so, so, what so seems, gonna... what seems to be the problem with the cash one, then? What is, like, the general overview of the neg- like people having a go at it for? Uh, everyone has different views on how to do it. It's going to be a really boring conversation for people that don't care about <laughs> PHP or PSRs. Basically, before I made the workflow that says that we have these three different stages, there was knowing how, how done something was, right? Someone would just make a markdown file on the internet somewhere, and then you could vote for that tomorrow, or you could vote for it in a month. And other people would say, okay, here's a pull request to fix yours, and then someone would pull request that guy, and then somebody else could pull request both of them, and we'd have like 20 different versions, and then someone would just rewrite the whole goddamn thing, and then we'd have like 12 versions of, of PSRs, and it was nuts. So now we have this workflow, theoretically, it should be quicker, but everyone's just so burnt out from trying to talk about it, and there's so many conversations, and it's just ridiculous. Like, it might happen someday, but it just needs someone to walk in there and be like, "Right, we're doing this, we're doing that. Shut your face, we're doing this," and and really kind of bully people a bit. 
um, but well, not not bully, but have some real sense of drive. You know, actually push it push it through. Yeah, I, I think. Yeah, what about you, Phil? You could, uh, you know, maybe go in there and uh, rub some feathers. <laughs> oh, mate, uh, PSR four and PSR seven are both my little babies. I'm actually involved with PSR six as well. Um, that, what, I say my babies. Uh, I'm the coordinator, so it's my job to like call the votes and kind oh, of you God, know you whip deal people. with all that fun stuff. Yeah, so <laughs> settle all the arguments, take votes whenever people disagree, all of that oh, shit. God. So I'm basically quite burnt out on the fig already. That most yeah, that really. I, I suppose you're, you're doing this in your free time, I, I, just to help the community as well, which is great. I'd r- much rather be at the pub. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you could be at the pub doing this as well, yeah. Which would then that, yeah, that doesn't work out very well. <laughs> I know that drinking and doing podcasts yeah. don't work out well. I'm sure that doesn't work out well either. Yeah, um, you suggested a few times that we record this from a pub. Yeah, <laughs> not anymore. The idea is just not. Yeah. Uh, How's I think I think we'd be alright. It's you now. I'm worried about it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> We'd be fine. I was fine last week. I don't know what you're on about. Yeah. Uh, can you two handle your drink better than Ed? No. Uh, my not. Dad, He's probably the best. Handle her drink better than Ed. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Which one of you lads was wearing the dress? I heard a story about uh, about <laughs> stag do. No, that was my, my mate. It wasn't any of us, thankfully. So uh, Your friend, uh, right. Yeah. My friend. <laughs> Michelle yeah. Budd. Michelle Budd. Yeah. No, I, I was... I was a strictly Batman outfit on my stag do. I was relatively okay. wasn't too bad. But, uh, oh yeah, my friend had to wear a dress. That was in Derbyshire. But, brilliant, uh, brilliant place to go for a stag do again. Just he actually that. looks weirdly attractive. And I, I feel bad saying it, but he did. I, I'll i show you the photos. No, you, you realise no, you can't you. take that back now, Mike, don't you? Oh, That's a good point. It. That's and it's out recorded there. evidence. This we can. Shocking. I'm not doing this podcast a third time. We can just delete this. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Completely agree. Shut up, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I did have a serious question. Um, with all your work with, uh, obviously, you, what you contribute towards PHP, does that mean that you, you don't have any real time to spend on other languages? And Does that concern you? Are you, you happy being sticking with PHP, or do you play with other languages in your spare time? Uh, or, definitely. Or? I, I play with a bunch of different languages. and I don't get as many as I could. Like I haven't had time to experiment with Go as much as I'd love to. Um, yeah. I, I do use Python and Ruby possibly as much as PHP itself. Um, okay. the, reason, the reason I stuck around with PHP as much is uh, because setting up, being involved with things like Code Igniter and Fuel PHP, I was involved with those because whilst I was a PHP developer, I wanted to, to make my house nice. You know, I wanted to have good, good tools <laughs> yeah. to use while I was there. Um, sure. but, but obviously, I could just kind of pop over to another language and just use that instead of trying to make the tools better here. Um, but being involved with Pyro CMS meant, okay, I've really kind of staked staked a lot of time, effort, money, community, work, effort, everything in, in PHP. Um, so I really have to make this whole, kind of like being involved, um, uh, what the hell, I had a whole little metaphor for this. But uh, <laughs> the people that are involved, <laughs> the involved wine, in how, the, <laughs> uh, the people that are involved in like uh, housing committees and stuff, uh, and stuff they're like, oh, we're going to make our neighborhood nice and, and stuff like that. Like, f- fuck that whole metaphor. But being involved with Pyro CMS, <laughs> Um, I kind of have to make, you know, uh, I want there to be good standards. I want there to be good code. I want to be able to use different components without having 25 different coding styles thrown throughout my code. I want to have, like, this awesome, awesome area, and I want PHP to be as good as it can um, so that, you know, we have good contributions to Pyro CMS and I can use good code and we can have good components to use instead of just some bollocks I copied off a website somewhere. Like, yeah. I kind of had to make PHP as good as I could for that. Um, but no, I spend a lot of time with Python and, and I've been developing in Ruby, um, especially playing with Rails since 2010 somewhere. Um, right. and I made a few websites, uh, madeinproduction.com, get a little, get a little adver- advertisement out there, yeah, um, okay. is uh, a silly website where we sell one t-shirt. We only have one the so double far. Double claw. Double claw. <laughs> Expect the double claw. Uh, good t-shirt. And that was done with Python. The reason we did it as Python mostly was because why the fuck not? And also as it was like a double mega troll, like this, this website about uh, PHP <laughs> self-deprecating jokes. We obviously made it with Python oh. to make it web scale. <laughs> so I've got a question with Python. Are you 2.7 or 3? Still 2.7, man. I know I shouldn't. Well, but... this is the thing, though, because yeah, there's, the trouble is there's so much that there is going to always be, I think, the trouble. They've split it off. And though they say one day 2.7 will go, it can't. People, so many yeah. people use it, and I, I'm so glad PHP never went down, hasn't gone down this route with like a five and a six or something stupid with Unicode. Um, that would have been I, scary. 
I think the only way to solve it is to have some conference with with two tracks uh, for Python developers and all, like a really big one. Um, and they put all of the main speakers, all of the main two seven users go on one side, and all of the new announcements for you know the three x branch are in the other room, and they just let off a bomb in the two seven room it 's the only way <laughs> anyway to solve it oh is it so, so did you choose two seven or was that just because of requirements for the job at the at hand um, I was using it I was using two seven a while ago, and i just can 't be bothered to, to learn more. Um, I feel like when I was when I was using it, most of the things like requests, you know, the HTTP library yep. and a, a lot of other packages I wanted were basically two seven only. That's the problem. Yeah, since absolutely. then, they've they've everyone that I've used has been upgraded, but I just don't care enough right now. Um, well, it's, it's like rewrite it. It's again, it's just rewrite. I mean, there is converters though, isn't there? That you can easily supposedly convert back and forth. Or I think you can convert from two seven to three easily, or one way or another. Um, yeah. But yeah, as you say, like it's you've already written that code. Why do you want to rewrite it? It's the same thing with Code Igniter and then rewriting in Laravel. You know, keep it in Code Igniter. If it works, it works. That's fine. Right. I, I, I might play with three point four or whatever the hell for a, for a new version for a new project I work on. But again, if it's a if it's a client project, then I'm going to spend I'm going to lose time because I'm not going to be as efficient. And if it's a personal project and I'm doing it as like some hack project in the evenings, I don't want to waste my time learning a new uh, a new thing. Well. Learning isn't wasting time, but I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't want to spend that Business. much extra time doing Money. it. <laughs> gotta gotta get that gold. Gotta sell Money. more units than last quarter. <laughs> oh, I haven't really messed around with Ruby or Python. Which one which one would you recommend out of those two to learn first? I would say there are possibly more learning resources for Ruby. Yep. Um, mm. and it might be quicker to get up to speed. I would say in the long run it doesn't matter. Um, they're both great. They're both very similar. And learning one, I think, will definitely kind of get you up to speed on the other. Um, what do you prefer? But if you do have a preference, I prefer Python. Yeah, I me prefer too. Py- High five. <laughs> Good choice. But to be honest, the, the decision process I use for which I'm going to use is pretty like just doesn't matter. Trivial. Like I use um, I use Heroku a lot, and I use I, I, I like service orientated architecture. Yep. So instead of having one mega framework that does everything, you just have uh, like this is this is the 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 piece of code that's going to trawl through Twitter and find out relevant content, and then it's going to post it back to my API. Um, the Twitter stream uh, Ruby library is really good, so that part can be Ruby. And then I'm going to work with Instagram and trawl through Instagram looking for new content uh, for here. But the Instagram library in Ruby is a bit shit, so I use the one in Python, and that can just be Python. So like I have all these that's little cool. apps that the, all yeah, work the, together. The polyglot approach, you know, using the best tool for the job. Yeah. Know, have you had a look at Docker at all? That idea, because that's very uh, much. I, I wanted to look at Docker, and then I thought that's something else I need to learn. It's it looks one point now, you know. Their, uh, their, their API won't change, which was fun for the past couple of months. But to be fair, people <laughs> shouldn't be using it in production, but they do because no, it's awesome. They, of course, they do. People well, we shouldn't use Node.js in production. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I was just about to say that. Oh, um, well, the thing with Docker was that I thought, okay, I need to learn this. I'm going to have to learn it, and then they just uh, vagrant. They just rolled Docker support in. Yep. So I'm like, oh, cool. I don't need to bother. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, so that actually moves on quite well to the RFCs and your your actual work in the PHP core and submitting um, uh, uh, re- requests for comments. Uh. Um, how uh, I, I, I there are a couple you know array of is one big one I remember speaking about you I do remember that last week um, which I think should have gone in. Uh, do you think uh. it will go in? No. Oh. Um, anything, Not in its current form. Right. It would have to change in a because of generics. Generics. <laughs> I can't be bothered to put the work in to try and make that work. There are other fights that how, I can how much more my fighting time to. do you find in core than and say like in the fig? Um, the fig is a smaller group, and it's it's usually you can kind of make someone see logic. Um, like it, it, it shouldn't it shouldn't be fighting. We shouldn't all just be shouting and the loud person winning. But usually with the fig, like if someone's just saying like, oh, this, I don't know what I'm trying to say. It, it's just a smaller group, yeah. and if someone someone, it's usually the case if someone's slightly confused about what you meant then you can kind of correct them. They're like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Whereas with the fig, it's just like, because so many people have, th- there is no right answer. There are so many different, like, there. this person's procedural, this person's oop, this person that's hates what I was gonna, change. Yeah, like, that's so what I was going to ask. Like, because there's a lot of, because uh, uh, it seems, I, I don't know, because I know you, you remember, another thing I remember last week, you said you, you spoke to Rasmus on a safari, I think it was. <laughs> I, remember I, that. Like to, I like to throw that out as much yeah, as possible. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God, I would too. I'd be like, just have a T-shirt. You should have a T-shirt made. I spoke to Rasmus <laughs> on a Friday. 
Um, I'll make the production. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but, what would he like the language to actually be? Like, what was his direction? Because everyone else is obviously putting it in the other, you know, it's obviously a democracy, so we all get to kind of choose, but, or, you know, the people, you know. But what was his, or what does he think, or what does he want, didn't want in it, and what does he want in it? I don't know. We didn't, we didn't speak exactly about that there were a few things that were kind of close um but i i'm not going to try and pretend to talk for him either but um there are a few he he generally is very happy it would seem that php is a language where you can do whatever you like that's cool. you can you can make it php you can make it oop you can do functional programming you can do whatever the hell you want um because procedure and functioning aren't really that, all that different um so I think he's very happy that you can do whatever you want. I think there are a lot of PHP developers that would like to see more OOP stuff happening because a lot of OOP, we're we're always taught, like both of our stories were we were shit at code and then we learned OOP and then we were good or we got better, (laughs) right? And and it's it's not that OOP is the best way of doing it. It's just that that's the way that we learn. The frameworks, the tools, the products that we learn with, that we pick apart are written in OOP. Um, and that's good. Mm-hmm. And then you look at something that's procedural like WordPress and go, oh, procedural bad. And it's not, that's not the case at all. They are both great. Um, but most shit code is written in procedural and most great code is written in OOP. And that's just kind of, that's, co- uh, correlation, not causation. Yeah. So I've, I wouldn't more the, um, more the kind of, what's the word? The design patterns that kind of give you that, uh, that nice structure, I guess, uh, you know, as long as you code in a nice way as well. But I say that's, you know, like you say, it's more a lot of the nice frameworks are using our own. And I get, but I think like the MVC more than anything, uh, that kind of design pattern has helped improve the quality of code, I'd say, more than OO. I think because I've, I've seen nice sites that have been coded procedurally. Uh, it can be done, you know, but I think it's more to do with the, the coding standards than anything else, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And, and things like testability as well. I mean, procedural yeah. applications can be tested, but it's bloody hard to unit test yeah. something that's got a thousand lines in it. Absolutely. So yeah. people always try and split it up, make the functions smaller, make the methods smaller, and MVC isn't enough. And now we need domain, entity, value, all this other shit. Like, you can, people always try and split it up more and more and more and more and more and more, oop, to make it yeah. more testable, more reusable, more nice. And it gets slower and slower and slower with every single layer of shit that you add. So yeah. I think most of the reasoning uh, that, so somewhere where me and Rasmus actually agree, which is great because we disagreed about everything. Like, <laughs> after, like, no, <laughs> no, no, yeah, <Yes, laughs> awesome. After after every question that someone would ask that he'd answer, he'd then just like roll his eyes and hand the microphone to me, and I'd give the opposite <laughs> answer. Um, but uh, yeah, like one of the bits we actually agree on um, was using frameworks is always going to be slower. Obviously, it is. Like it would be insane, yeah. uh, slower in terms of performance. It would be insane to pretend that doing more stuff doesn't take longer, right? Yeah, um, so you, you you get the gains of um, development speed, and if you need efficiency, you make your MySQL database quicker, or you tweak your CSS, and you do a hundred things. And when you get to the point where like PHP code is actually the slowest part, you're in an amazing problem because you've just turned into Facebook. Um, <laughs> but or, or even even at like Etsy, where they have to make things as quick as possible, they probably had some shit Ruby on Rails app running their version one prototype. Um, or whatever they went to market with, whatever it was. Um, and then eventually it just wasn't quick enough. Then they started replacing stuff with procedural. So Rasmus likes procedural because it's the fastest way to go. But he forgets the fact that not everyone is trying to make the most performant application they're, straight away. They're trying to make um, the most testable or quicker, yeah. Yeah, just make version one. Get some money in the bank. Once you need to be Facebook, you can hire some bloody people and it ain't just you doing it on a Sunday afternoon and, it's a and then you can honor, make it you know, really fast it's a badge of honor it's like <laughs> I need to rethink this you know because it's becoming so successful yeah because there was one thing Nikita um, from pitch uh, from the core said like he, he was had a blog post on it a couple of months ago on primitive uh, methods on primitive types yeah um, and I really do like the idea of that kind of making pseudo objects on these on these primitive types such as like you know an array and then you're able to say uh, you know like the arrow length and stuff like that um, I just don't think that will ever happen, though. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's I really a, want it. Yeah, I really it, want it. It would be beautiful like that. I know, again, because, again, you can do it another way of string length. I know we can already do it that way, but it would just add to it, and that, and it makes it easier because, obviously, then you have you don't have the whole needle and haystack thing. And you yeah, can and it gives that. us that ability to completely rethink a new API and, can, and conserve backwards compatibility. I wrote a blog post called PHP 6 Pissing in the Wind, and it was kind of a drunken <laughs> rant blog post, but it was saying exactly that. It was like, 
we have this current quirky API, and I'm not going to sit around and pretend that I lose sleep over the fact that sometimes it's called str len, sometimes it's called str underscore something. I don't care. <laughs> but the fact is that it's not great, and it would be nice if we could fix it. Like, um, it'd be nice to fix it. And, and doing the whole, you know, things, uh, a pseudo method, uh, pseudo objects, uh, you know, um, scalar types and all that stuff, that would be a great chance to fix it. And it would also maintain backwards compatibility perfectly. And it would also give us the chance to add UTF-8 support in by you know, making a new object type. So this is, you know, there's the string interface, the, you know, standard string, a ASCII string, implement string interface, UTF-8, at, you know, and then you have this other second layer. And if you, you can even add UTF-16 support with another, That's you know, it. another Just... concrete implementation of the in- interface. And that shit would be great. Um, the reason that gets so much pushback is because co- people in the core team think that that's oop and i don't think that that is oop working with an object doesn't make it you know making php be oop it's not turning php into java just because you have to work with an object working with an object isn't what oop means it just means that you have an object now and you can just like with an exception when you throw an exception and catch an exception that's an object but you can use an object in procedural programming without suddenly tainting it as oop right absolutely agree absolutely agree and i think that that was talking about because i remember you were talking about it um I think it must be a couple of episodes back on PHP Town Hall about Unicode and um, performance and stuff with PHP 6. And I like the way that Python deals with it, um, especially in, in, in Python 3, where they just deal with code points. Instead of actually having it that, you know, obviously a byte is a character. So obviously we have all these problems where, you know, in a string, a byte is a character in a string. They just deal with the code points instead. And then, you know, you can then by that have use, you know, encode that into a representation of UTF-8 or UTF-16 or UTF-8, you know, UTF-32 or, you know, big endian, little endian, whatever you want to do. Just go down to the fact that you have, you deal with code points. And I think maybe someone like this could actually deal with it that way. Um, But yeah, again, I suppose it's that whole thing of they're the clever ones. They know what they're doing under the hoods. And I'm just thinking of it kind of like in hyperbole. Yeah, and it, and again, it's even when people think of a great, the best way of doing it, then they actually have to do it, and that That's, sucks. Yeah, that is it. Or you just ask Joe Watkin, and you go, Joe, any chance this actually would work? <laughs> <laughs> like, he's like, no. Like, okay, I knew it wouldn't work. I just thought I'd test you. I was like, testing you, you win. Can I just chime in for two secs, guys, if that's all right? Because yeah. uh, unfortunately, I've got a head off. But okay. um, I just want to say, Phil, it's been a pleasure speaking to you. Good to meet you. Right, cheers, man. You and, too. Um, yeah, uh, I've just got one one final question, if that's cool. And then, uh, yeah, as I say, I'm going to have to shoot. So um, yeah, man. Basically, basically, all it is, obviously, we've made our podcast um, aimed for, for more beginner developers. So uh, I would just be interested to hear the, kind of your thoughts and tips and kind of what pathway you'd recommend to anyone that's maybe looking to get into it. Absolutely. Um, that's a good question. I have to think. Um, treehouse.com. Uh, treehouse.com has a, has a bunch of really good resources. Unfortunately, it is paid, um, but it's really cheap. And there aren't a huge number of really good free resources out there yet. Um, phpbridge.org, I think. phpbridge.org has a bunch of free resources that are being put together by people like... Um, Davy Shafik and I've forgotten everybody else, but phpbridge.org has a bunch of free stuff. It's free, like teaching course material um, for people to use. And uh, Treehouse has a bunch of other stuff. phptherightway.com is a project I'm involved with, run by Josh Lockhart, who um, they go through like best standards and practices. Um, a lot of information about like you should use this MySQL inst- extension, not that one, because that one's getting ripped out next month. Like really good information for more intermediate but um between those three resources you really should be able to get quite a long way and code academy has a good track i did the code academy and i've got through the first two courses so i might have a future in php programming Um, (laughs) (laughs) the future is bright but it's yeah it's it's good it's a good program for both of them awesome well thank thanks for that uh yeah i'm gonna have to shoot guys so um enjoy the rest of the podcast and uh yeah speak to you soon phil take care cheers fella Bye, 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 bye guys I don't know. I feel like I've been doing a lot of talking. Somebody else can have no, a go. No, that's good. That's what no, we're for. <laughs> we just talk all the time, so it's great, man. I, just, <laughs> I feel uh, sorry for anyone that's been listening to all three, uh, to both this uh, PHP Town Hall <laughs> and Three Devs and a Maybe and Loosely Coupled because I've been on all three within a week. <laughs> actually, just extending on Lou's question, actually, if you were a beginner programmer, would you even recommend PHP as the first language to learn now or would you go for something else? Um, I don't know. That's a tricky one. I mean, P- 
I feel like there have been a lot more modern resources dedicated to making learning other languages better, right? There yeah. are a lot of these things like um, uh, peer uh, peer videos. I can't remember what it's called. Um, or peak, whatever. Those Code Academy, uh, Treehouse, all of those other things, mostly because they were being run by people that were technically minded and yeah. they, liked, they liked the other languages more. They remember back when they were shit at coding, they remember mm. that, that PHP was bad and they're remembering their bad coding. Um, yeah. So they've kind of shit upon PHP, and and they they've support they've got training resources for Ruby and P and Python and other languages, uh, and JavaScript very much so. Um, but but that's the thing, though, isn't it? I mean, PHP is nothing like what it was when we first learned PHP. Do you know what no. I mean? It's come along such a long way now. I mean, I know yeah. we've asked this question many times, but I mean, would you would you tell someone to learn PHP procedurally, or or because you know if they start off with procedural, they might get confused with OO. It might be just best to start them on the OO route. You know what I mean? It's, so, yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Because no, I'm go for it. Like here. It's, it's really hard to tell everyone how, like the one way they should code. There are so many people saying different things about, like, yeah. you should always learn with the frameworks. It will get you up to scratch and you can start making stuff quicker. Or you should never learn from a framework because yeah. then you're not learning how the core works. But both me and Ed have already said that we learned by picking apart PHP, BB, or post-nuke or yeah. WordPress. So those were the frameworks of the day. If we started developing completely from scratch, I'd still be learning what the hell a factory object <laughs> is. Yeah, yeah. And I wouldn't have ever built anything. So um, you really, it depends. Try, I don't know. I think the best thing to do is to try and find a course, any course that's from a reputable source. So treehouse.com, Code Academy, any of those, and then just run with it. JavaScript, flip, flip a coin, I don't care. But you know what? Possi- I, possibly JavaScript. I was going to say exactly it is no thing. JS and front end and Angular. Yes. You can do a lot of it. And because it's ECMAScript, you can then learn PHP. Um, yeah. I, I definitely suggest you try and learn PHP at some point because the yeah. market's huge. There are more yeah. people hiring PHP developers than anybody else. There's a huge shortage at the moment, but I agree with you. I would say JavaScript because in some ways taking out the uh, the equation, the libraries that have come in, I guess the, the core language hasn't changed that much, but the principles you'll learn from learning JavaScript will last you a lifetime. I, I think if you can learn those concepts with JavaScript, you, you can move on to other languages quite nicely. And, and the point you make about support and resources on the web you're not going to find more than there is out there for for JavaScript, I guess. Just just get your head around protocol inheritance and all that on uh, JavaScript, <laughs> and then you know you're golden. Yeah, yeah, fair point. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. So I suppose my last question actually um, is actually I've completely gone blank, so that's a bit embarrassing. <laughs> have you got a last question, Mickey? I Why have. I have because I know we we say we would only keep Phil to to an hour and we've probably gone over that already but uh i was going to say we should really mention i know phil you've already talked about about um php town hall which is at phptownhall.com and uh i've listened to podcasts it's really really good and it, i guess in some ways it's not too dissimilar to free maybe.com apart from the fact that you've got better guests and better material and you guys actually know what you're talking about but actually, other than that it's a <laughs> actually really we good have podcast. the we have the exact same guests uh joe watkins <laughs> and uh J- jacks woodcroft and they were both on there yeah, um, that's embarrassing. I think that's Ed's fault. He we're just still in them. I have not yes, been influenced at all. I think one of the best things that's happened uh, for PHP, and a lot of people think are on my side with this, is Laravel. Uh, not because I know it's the nice, shiny new thing, but the way it's doing things. Uh, you know, I know for size, I'm not going to mention that name, but you know, stuff like the IOC container, <laughs> dependency <late>. injection. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> dun dun dun. Paul's already writing a blog about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and all these best practices and how they do it. You know, mocking, unit testing being, you know, the forefront of it. And I think that's great. And I think it is quite intimidating. That was one thing actually we we did speak about before, and I'll just mention just quickly um, that you know we started looking at coding nighter, but could you imagine coming in and just looking at laravel and not code Igniter first it would be quite an intimidating experience i'd be freaking terrified yeah, yeah. it's a it, yeah. and i kind of feel a bit up, sorry for people like nowadays that like yeah you're gonna learn laravel oh you don't know oh you just looking at the you know because we were like oh my god controllers oh my god models oh my yeah. god you yeah. know views now it's like oh haven't it's you your got... first framework and you aren't using the repository path. yeah exactly the domain object on the outside <laughs> yeah. what the hell are you it's doing like, you idiot you don't use it include. <laughs> no what are you doing you know it's like you crazy. if you guys if I can make a recommendation to you guys, uh, to, to your listeners, if you are interested in Laravel but concerned about the, the the mocking and the testing and the service providers and the repositories, just don't use any of that shit. Um, if you if you look at um, use use it statically, like it, we we did an episode on PHP 
particularly Town Hall with um, with Jeffrey Way and and like a mini disagreement me and ha- him had a while ago was that uh, Jeffrey and a few other people were teaching the advantages of using um, of using repository patterns um, and and various other aspects of unit testing your controllers about doing all these things. They were they were putting those good practices into most of their videos. So if they're teaching you how basic thing X works, they do it, but they'd use a repository while they were doing it. So in all of these videos, you're constantly, every single time seeing, every single time you have to use a repository, you have to use this, you have to write unit tests. And you should, at some point, when you know how that stuff works. But if it's your first controller and you're trying to build Hello World, you don't want to write a unit test that says, I expect Hello World to be output before you write Hello World. You just... You need to get on with making a website first before you then start to worry about it later on. Um, so I think people need to learn to... They, they, they've they agreed that they kind of were pushing that stuff quite heavily, and now I think they, they explain a little more and then more recent material, um, like the differences, the pros and the cons, the when, whatever else. I think that's great. Um, yeah. But yeah, it, it's just misleading for new developers that think they have to do that. I've, I've, I do consulting on Skype a lot. And one of the main questions I get asked by people that like pay me a hundred bucks just to come and like talk to me about like give my get my advice, they're always saying I've been using Laravel for two months and I don't know how to unit test my controllers and I say don't and give yeah. them the money back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah, because I, I would just be so scared, sorry, and be scared if I was a developer starting now with like yeah you meant to be yeah. Um, yeah. So I yeah, agree. but I think your advice is yeah very sound and very true. Um, but yeah, that, that's all my question. Thanks so much, Phil, for coming on and yeah. finishing oh, this. Thanks for having me. It's been great fun. I was going to say to you, I mean, uh, I don't want people like trying to stalk you in the UK and stuff, but you're in the UK at the moment. <laughs> and, uh, like we're, me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I hope this doesn't sound desperate, but uh, we're going to a meetup in, in Maidstone. Uh, and for any of the listeners who are like, in the Kent area, there's a uh, PHP. Is it a PHP meetup or is it just a web, dev a web meetup? Meet I think Joe's coming as well, isn't he? He is. Uh, yeah, Joe Watkins is going to be there. So, yeah, Phil, if you're around, you should definitely come around. I know you can speak bought... place, but uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm currently in London ish, but I'm heading north shortly. I've already stalked you oh. guys enough. I've already stalked you guys enough to know that that event's happening and to know that I can't make it. So unfortunately, <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll... that's good thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, that's a shame. But yeah, like like I said, thanks so much for coming on. It's uh, it's really cool. Uh, yeah, really interesting speaking to you. Thanks, man. So I guess that's uh, that's all for the week. Yeah, I think so. That's awesome. A wrap. So uh, that's um, like a really short, well, shorter episode for us. So people won't actually but... scream at us. <laughs> exactly, but. <laughs> To all of our uh, six listeners, definitely check out PHP Town Hall. You can hear uh, Phil Moore there, and uh, it's really good uh, content there. Much better than ours, so check it out. Plus one on that. Uh, completely yeah. <laughs> cool. Thanks for listening, guys. We'll be back next week. Awesome. Cheers. Bye. You've been listening to Three Devs and a Maybe. You can contact us at contact at threedevsandamaybe.com or follow us on Twitter at the number three, Devs and a Maybe.